Namaste. Welcome to class. Today I just wanted to talk about some modifications for an Ashtanga Vinyasa Sun Salutation A and for a Hatha Sun Salutation. Salutations are used in lots of yoga classes within the sequencing to help get from one asana to another. If you're new or quite new to yoga, there might be some modifications that you will need to employ to keep yourself safe and your body in good condition whilst doing these sequences. So, I'm going to use blocks. Um, I know when I first started practicing, um, I practiced at studios that didn't have blocks or yoga straps. And uh, when I first came across them, I was thinking, oh, they must just be for, you know, making things a little bit easier. And um, that's not necessarily the case. You can use blocks to help with your alignment, but you can also use blocks as you become more advanced to make asanas more challenging, take yourself to the next level. They're really, really useful. And I do personally believe that alignment is really, really important not just for the safety of your body, but also to get the greatest benefit out of the asana. If you don't have blocks at the moment, you can grab a couple of big books to use instead. So, we're going to start with the Ashtanga Vinyasa Sun Salutation A, which is really common and probably used a lot more than the Hatha Sun Salutation in my own personal experience from classes that I have been to. So I'm going to take the blocks and put them at the top of my mat. They're going to go either side of my feet. Obviously, one of the great things about blocks is they have multiple options as to where you can put them. So you can have them on the highest setting, you can have them at the middle, or you can have them at the lowest. So for example, if you're in class and we're doing Sun Salutation A, we're obviously going to start in our standing position, tipping our pelvis. So we're tucking the tailbone under, standing nice and straight and tall. Inhaling, reaching the arms up overhead. Now, a lot of the time, people will ask you to bring your palms together. Sometimes when people do this, they end up squashed and really bringing the shoulder out of the socket. Okay? Right now, you don't want to be extending the shoulder quite this far. So if you find you do that and this happens, you can just keep the palms facing each other, keeping the arms nice and active. So from here, untucking the tailbone, coming down forward, and you come to your forward fold. So if your hands don't reach the mat either side of your feet, often what you'll do if you haven't got blocks is bend your knees. And you'll see straight away, I'm not going to be working my legs the same and I'm not quite going to be able to work my back in the same way. So if I can't reach, I can still have straight legs and use the blocks on any of the heights so that I can keep my legs straight, my hips high and dropping my forehead down towards my legs. The next position will be your Adha Uttanasana which is your flat back position. So your chin is coming away from your chest, your gaze is straight ahead and your fingertips would be lightly brushing the mat or the blocks or bring them to your shins. Following this, you drop your hands back to the blocks and you walk, step or jump back to a high plank position. So if you're walking back and then coming forward, you want to be rounding through the shoulders, pushing yourself away from the mat or pushing the mat away from you. You can drop your knees here. It's a good amount of core strength to do your plank well, and it's better to be rounding through the shoulders with the weight in the right place and the knees down than to have the knees up and be in this position. Okay, so always think about rounding through the shoulders regardless of where you're at. The other consideration is actually your hands and how you're using them. Yes, the fingertips 
should be wide, you should be nice and spread out. But you should be really gripping with the fingertip. So the knuckle closest to your palm is lifting away as you grip, grip, grip with your fingertips. This will really help you. So in my high plank, you see my chest is slightly forward. You should be keeping your gaze ahead here, not down. And then you come to your low plank or your Chaturanga Dandasana. Even with the knees down, keep the tummy tucked, keep that core engaged, okay? You bend the elbows, bringing them in next to the rib cage, keeping the gaze ahead. Don't take it down because you're going to end up on the top of your head, which is not where you're meant to be. So keep the gaze ahead, bend the elbows, they're coming out to the side, chest comes down. My gaze is still ahead, I flatten my feet and I slide forward to come to my upward facing dog. So the feet are really pushed flat into the mat here. Now I would recommend that actually you take the blocks away. So when you've come down on your chaturanga, okay, you come down and as you slide you can take the blocks out and come to your upward facing dog. Now sometimes if you feel a pinch towards your lower back here or your shoulders are really uncomfortable, there are two other options I would recommend and consider. So if I come back to where I was and don't slide through, I would be down flat on my mat my feet would be roughly hips width apart and my fingers are under my shoulders. What I would get you to do is bring the feet and the legs together, keeping the gaze down. We're going to come to a baby cobra. So you would lift your hands away from the mat, squeeze your legs together, squeezing your thighs, your glutes, engaging your core, inhaling, and lifting your chest off the mat. And so you take your gaze ahead, keep the legs squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And releasing down. The other option, if you prefer, is a sphinx pose. Again, the legs need to be together, the feet need to be together. And you bring your forearm and your palm flat. It's good to bring the shoulder and the elbow roughly into one line and you'll see my elbows are quite close into my rib cage here as well. Squeezing the legs together, the feet together, you inhale and you look up and you're pushing the chest forward here as well. Now with your sphinx pose there are also a couple of variations on this. So if this is too much right now for your lower back, you can just take your gaze down to the mat. Straight away, this releases pressure. Alternatively, you take the arms, the hands out wider. If you do this, you need to try and make sure that your forearms are staying parallel to one another. You don't want them off on an angle. So, wherever you go to, make sure that your lower back isn't in any discomfort. Your next stage in your sun salutation A, you would come back down from your upward facing dog or your variation, your sphinx, your baby cobra, whatever was comfortable. You'd be looking at your mat, you'd take your fingers back under the shoulders, Gripping the mat with your fingertips, making sure your feet are roughly hips width apart. And you can just push up, coming towards your tabletop. Okay, and I can see that I've gone a little bit wide here. Tucking the toes, you can now push back into your downward facing dog. You want to think about pushing the mat away from you. So you're really pushing down there, 
and dropping the heels, dropping the head. So a lot of people when they first come to yoga and start doing downward facing dog, their heels aren't down. And that's absolutely fine. You can just be on the toes and you can bend your knees. All the time though, think about the hips being high and think about that head being low. And each time you come to your downward facing dog, we'll go a little bit further each time. Each breath, each downward facing dog, you will improve and you'll see and feel the difference. So we would now start traveling back to the top of the mat and you'll either be asked to walk, step, jump, float, any of these things. Um, if you just want to take several steps, that's fine. Alternatively, if you raise your leg up and then bend the knee, bring it into the chest, and you'll see I've come up onto the back toes and I've taken my gaze forward, my chest is coming forward, my weights come forward, this gives me way more chance of getting this leg to the front than if I've just picked it up and gone like this, okay? So really raising, coming onto the toe, bend the knee, bring it to the chest, gaze and weight forward, and then stepping it through. It'll get easier every time and you can always just shuffle it, walk it through. Bring the other leg to meet it. Grab your blocks again if you've been using them. Coming to your flat back position, fingertips, blocks, mat, shins, chin forward, gaze ahead. Exhale, coming to your full forward fold. Keeping those legs straight and then rounding your spine, coming all the way up to standing, sweeping the hands up overhead, making sure the tailbone is in its tucked position, pulse the heart and release. Okay, so that's just a quick run through with some modifications of Ashtanga Vinyasa Sun Salutation A. It's really good just to try at home and find what works for you with this. It might be that um, at the class you go to there aren't any blocks available and in which case you will be needing to bend your knees. But it's really just a case of listening to your body but having advice and a few options there. So we're going to talk about um, a Hatha sun salutation. As I've said these are not used as frequently as the Ashtanga Vinyasa Salutation from my own personal experience. Um, one of the things that perhaps intimidates people from using this is there is a back bend um, at the beginning and the end of each cycle of the salutation. Uh, the other thing that you often find as well is um, some of the Sanskrit names are opposing to the Sanskrit names in the Ashtanga Vinyasa. So that can cause some confusion as well. Um, I'm going to give you some modifications for the back bend because actually the rest of the salutation is really, really accessible and it's a really nice flow to do and it's really easy to manipulate and add your own variations of asanas into. It's a great vehicle and it can be a nice change. So let's talk about the back bend straight away. So one of the things that happens um, a lot is when people come to back bends, instead of actually lifting their spine and curving and going back, what happens is they go from the lower back and they just bend. So for example, if I do a back bend incorrectly, so I, my tailbone is untouched, so mistake one. And you say, do a back bend, okay. And you can see I've just gone from here, I've used this part of my spine only and my hips have really thrown forwards. And really what we're looking for is the tailbone tucked, the first step is lifting the chest, lifting the sternum to the side, and then it's 
really making this beautiful curve as you come back and keeping the hips fairly static. So there are other options so that you can get used to using the correct muscles and how it feels. So the first, perhaps the most accessible option that I would recommend for your back bend in the salutation is actually just a bit of a chest opener that just does a very gentle lift. So at the start of the salutation, you would be starting at the top of your mat with your feet together, with your tailbone tucked, standing tall. You'd raise your hands up overhead, and again, you can either bring them together or just keep them facing as long as everything's engaged. Then it would come to the back bend. And what I would recommend is lifting the chest, bringing the arms to the side with bent elbows and squeezing the scapula together. So from the front, it looks a little bit like a, a type of cactus. So we inhale and lift and look up. We exhale and we have these cactus arms that actually seem to be becoming quite popular in yoga classes at the moment. So my chest lifts and my shoulder blades are really squeezing. Okay, you might only come to here but I find if I just come down a bit more, I really work into my shoulders and I lift my chest and just curve from here a little bit more, which takes my gaze up and is a gentle back bend just from the upper section of the spine. So that's your first and really most accessible option that I would recommend for safety. The second option is to be taking the hands to the lower spine. So you would bring the hands to the lower spine, thumbs meeting, fingers pointing up is ideal. You can have them pointing down and you want your elbows pointing out to the back. If you can have them up, that's great. If you're more comfortable with them down, okay. So you took the tailbone again. Straight away, first thing after this, I lift my chest. So I start lifting through my sternum before I go back. So, lifting, I'm just starting to take it back. Okay, and then you gently come forward. You don't need to take your head too far back. You can just keep your head in one line. Okay, because that's one of the other things that happens is people drop their heads too far and hurt their necks. So showing you that one again, tailbone tucked, fingertips, lower spine, pointing upwards, inhale, chest lifting, looking up, starting to come back gently, gently, gently. And inhale, coming back to center. So those are the two options I would take for the back bend rather than going for the full back bend. Even myself as a warm-up, I like to take a much more gentle back bend than heading straight in. So let's go through the whole of the Hatha Sun Salutation. We'll take our cactus option on the back bend as we go in, and we will do the fingers at the lower spine on the way out if you feel comfortable with that. So, top of the mat, Feet together, tailbone tucked, gaze straight ahead, thighs lifting, kneecaps lifting, everything engaged. Inhale, raising the palms up. Exhale, taking our cactus arms, lifting the chest, taking the gaze up, squeezing the shoulder blades. Inhale, coming back up, gaze straight ahead, untuck your tailbone and start coming down to your full forward fold. So again, blocks are a great option here if you can't reach the floor with straight legs. So, head down, hips high. Inhale, flat back position, gaze ahead, chin away from chest. Exhale, palms down. And you're going to step your left leg back. You're stepping it quite a long way because we're coming to horse riding pose. You flatten your foot. You check the alignment of the front knee. 
You want the knee on top of the ankle, joint on top of joint, bone on top of bone. And try and have the knee in line with the second toe. Make sure your knee is not over the toes. That goes for many, many things in yoga. So as you'll see right now, my torso is quite forward, my shoulders are quite rounded. So coming up to the horse riding pose, we would actually just be lifting the torso up. You can just make your kind of cupcake hand or if you're grabbing a ball or an apple or anything round or think like a grabber in an arcade going down to get the toy. So looking ahead, shoulders back, chest coming forward. You can also come up slightly higher and take the blocks to the side here. So you can do this without the hands. Often people will do this with the arms raised, but some people find this a little challenging for balance, so you just pop the blocks here. Okay, we're then gonna start stepping back. So just taking the blocks out to the side because we're gonna grab them later. Placing the hands back down either side of the foot tucking the back toe, looking ahead, lifting the back knee, fingertips grabbing, remember think about the fingertip grabbing and the knuckle nearest the palm lifting away. So we step back and we're actually going to bring our feet together rather than apart. This is where we would come to a high plank. So again, rounding through those shoulders, pushing yourself away from the mat, don't have a dippy down middle. And then very quickly we come down to what we call Ashtanga Namaskar. So we actually drop the knees as the next step. We don't actually hold this plank. And again, just bringing the weight slightly further forward. You'll see it's just a small move. Slightly forward, gaze ahead, bending the elbows into the rib cage. You drop the chin and the chest. Elbows come up to the side and pelvis in the air. So then flattening the feet and sliding your midsection down. We would then be coming to our cobra. So our feet are together, our legs are together and engaged. And we've been lifting all the way up. So this is quite a strong position. If you come to this and you're kind of here, then I would straight away recommend coming back down to baby cobra, or if you're feeling that discomfort in the lower spine, you come to the baby cobra that we've looked at. So remember baby cobra, fingers under shoulders, feet together, lift the hands, inhale, lift, look up, each inhale, try and lift a little further, exhale coming down, or again the sphinx pose, forearms down, hands down, Legs engaged, and just lifting the chest up and through. And remember, too much pinch here, look down, widen the arms. Okay, so then from our cobra, we would push back to what's called Parvatasana. So this is like downward facing dog, but with your feet together. So again, you can engage your fingers, engage your toes, and you can push up to your tabletop. Tabletop's really good for getting your alignment in downward facing dog and in Parvatasana. So tucking the toes, looking ahead, getting the core ready, feeling it engaged, engaging the fingers, push the mat away from you, take the hips up, take the feet down, take the head down. So just like downward facing dog, if your heels don't touch the floor, Lift them up, bend the knees, hips high, head low. So looking forward, coming back through in this one, we're going to raise the left leg. Try and keep the hips square and keep the gaze to the front of your mat or just in between your palms. Bend the knee, bring it up to the chest, nice and high. Coming onto the right toes. And stepping it through and forward, drop the back knee, drop the back foot flat. Check the alignment of the front leg. Make sure bone is stacked on bone. 
and that your knee is roughly in line with the second toe and not over the toes. So I'm going to bring the blocks back in, so I want to come to my nice horse riding pose. So first up, I'd just be lifting the chest, dropping the shoulders back, keeping the gaze ahead. This is really working into this back leg through into the hip. You will be feeling it here. If you're not, take the stance wider. And then again, we can just come back that little bit higher and use our blocks here to help us keep us stable, keep us supported. And then we'd be coming back down, bring the blocks either side of the foot, fingertips and toes in one line, tuck the back toe, looking ahead, stepping it through, feet together, inhale, chin away from chest, flat back position, exhale, fold, forward, fold, hips high, head low, inhale, coming up, raising the arms up overhead, Tucking the tailbone, legs nice and strong, and this is where we would come to the back bend, bend again. So fingers at the lower spine this time. Inhale, lift that chest, and just come back. And then back to centre, raising the arms up overhead, hands together, put your heart, and release. So I hope some of those modifications are useful. They do take a bit of practice and a bit of time. Um, I personally think alignment is super important. Nobody wants you to leave a yoga class injured. If you are ever not sure and you're in a studio, ask the teacher after class. If something doesn't feel right, listen to your body. Do what feels right and good for you. Every body is unique. So, thank you very much for joining me today. Namaste. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the mat.